Hi friends of cocktails! Today we're tackling a classic cocktail with scotch whiskey. The blood and sand. I'll show you the original recipe first. Then we'll make a funky cocktail time twist with fermentation. It's something we haven't tried on this channel yet and it might not be for everybody. So let's make the classic blood and sand first. I'll make the original recipe for the blood and sand which appears in the Harry Craddock's 1930 The Savoy Cocktail Book as equal parts scotch whiskey, Italian vermouth, cherry brandy and orange juice. It was created in 1922 by an unknown bartender who named the cocktail after Rudolf Valentino's Blood and Sand Bullfighter movie, which was released the same year. The red cherry herring is set to represent the blood and the orange juice, the sand. This cocktail can be garnished with either an orange peel or a maraschino cherry. I'm going with the cherry this time. It's good, but a bit too sweet for my taste. If you're looking for a more balanced cocktail, showcasing quality scotch, doubling the amount of whiskey is the way to go. But we'll go a bit further than that by making clacto fermented smoky orange juice and swapping cherry herring for maraschino liqueur and cherry preserve. It's cocktail time. Fermentation, one of the oldest methods of food processing. It can make foods and drinks rich in beneficial probiotics and has been associated with a range of health benefits. But when you're experimenting with fermentation at home, make sure you always follow the recipes and instructions to avoid spoilage. My fermentation bible is The Art of Fermentation by Sandor Elix Katz. You just know that's a man you can trust with microorganisms in food and drinks. To make the lacto-fermented smoky orange juice, you'll need organic oranges, Lapsang Swanchong smoky black tea and salt. I'm using unrefined sea salt from the Sechoia Selina nature park on the Slovenian coast, but any salt you'll use should work just fine. To make it simple, we'll take advantage of the fact that the bad bacteria can't really tolerate salt, while the good guys can. These bacteria will convert sugars naturally present in oranges into lactic acid, a natural preservative that holds back the growth of harmful bacteria. The tea is there, just to give the final product a nice smoky undertone, complementing the scotch. Here's the whole process. Always start with rinsed organic oranges, but don't use anything antibacterial to clean them since that might kill off the good bacteria as well. For this recipe I want 40 grams of orange peels and 500 grams of orange wedges. Fruits primarily ferment into alcohol, because the sugars are more commonly consumed by yeast rather than the bacteria. To make sure that doesn't happen, I'll add salt before placing everything in a vacuum bag. Most recipes suggest 1.5 to 2% salt of the total weight. I'm going with 1.5% weight of the oranges and the peels since that will give the right amount of funkiness without being too salty for the cocktail. That represents 8.1 gram of salt. If you want to be on the safe side, go with 2%. The last ingredient, which I tried as an experiment working on this recipe, is Lapsang Son Chua black tea. The smokiness adds a layer that's just amazing and I'd really recommend finding this tea for this recipe. Add 1 gram before mixing everything well to get the salt and the tea evenly distributed. If you'll do this using your hands, make sure they are clean, but again, avoid antibacterial soap. And since air is bad for fermentation, I'll transfer this to a bag, spread it out evenly, then vacuum seal it. You could do this in an airtight jar with weights on top to keep the fruit submerged in the liquid that will be drawn out from the oranges. But a vacuum bag provides a more controlled environment, so I strongly suggest using this method. Finally, if you take anything from this episode, let it be this. Always mark your fermentation bags with the date and the content. You don't want to guess how long something has been in there. Then it's a waiting game. Leave the bag at room temperature for the bacteria to do its thing. The timing will depend on the temperature of the room and the amount of salt you added. More salt and a lower temperature will prolong the fermentation process. 
With the fermentation process, CO2 is released, inflating the bag. While testing the recipe, I tried the batch after the first time the bag inflated, but the flavors weren't fully developed yet. So now I poke a small hole after it gets inflated for the first time, release the pressure and reseal the bag to allow it to ferment some more. The learning curve is a part of the fun with fermentation. Once the bag gets inflated for the second time, it's time to cut open the bag and juice the contents. Every time you open the bag, do a smell test to see if you're on the right track or if any bad bacteria joined in the fermentation fun. If instead of smelling slightly sour and pleasant, you get a rancid punch to your nose. Something went wrong and you should just throw it away and try with a new batch. I'm using my old trusted juicer, but you could also just drain and squeeze thoroughly the contents of the bag through a cheesecloth. The pulp can be used to make a fermented orange jam, which I imagine would make a crazy good breakfast martini. But for us, the final step is to bottle the juice. Add the date to the label and your lacto-fermented smoky salty funky orange juice is done. To slow down any additional fermentation, place the juice in the fridge and make sure to open it every day, just to prevent any possible gas buildup in the bottle. Since the orange juice we'll be using is still technically a live thing, I'm calling this cocktail the blood and quick scent. Let's make it. Just like the original recipe, these two will be a shaking cocktail. For the base, I'll be using the same whiskey I used for the New York Sour made with a cherry peach syrup, the Naked Grooves Blended Scotch. Check out that cocktail after this episode, here at 37.5 ml, or one and a quarter of an ounce of our scotch. Next is our lacto-fermented smoky orange juice, 22 and a half ml, or three quarters of an ounce. If you didn't use the smoky black tea during fermentation and you still want some smokiness in the cocktail, you can add half a bar spoon of a peated scotch. Follow that with the same amount, 22 and a half ml or three quarters of an ounce of Antica Formulas with vermouth. This vermouth is a bit sweeter, but that's just fine since we're adding two bar spoons of a cherry preserve instead of cherry herring. This doesn't have a lot of sugars added. If yours does, opt for a vermouth that's not as sweet, like the Punta Mes. And lastly, two dashes of Luxardo Maraschino liqueur. This will add a bit of nutty notes and add to the cherry characteristics of this drink. Add plenty of ice and give it a good shake. This will be served up in a Nika Nora glass, so there will be no additional dilution. Make sure to double strain to catch all the cherry preserve. And some cocktails don't need a garnish. This is one of them. You could say this cocktail took a week to make, so you'll be craving that first sip. Cheers! It's fruity on the nose, with the fermented smoky orange already coming through, but the taste is where it shines. A bold flavor, just salty enough, pairing nicely with a bit of smoke and the scotch. It gets slightly nutty, but still smoky on the aftertaste. The naked goose is standing tall against the strong flavors, to make it a great base for this funky version of the blood and scent. I'll admit, I'm biased, but I prefer it to the original. I hope you learned that fermentation doesn't have to be intimidating, but fun and curious. I'll leave a link to this book in the description. If you'd like to learn more, we'll see you next week with the second birthday episode, where I'll be making something that hasn't been done on this channel before. Subscribe and hit that bell icon, so you won't miss it. Cheers!